Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS, and in this video, we're going to do a real-world accuracy test of the new Metroscan Black 3D scanner and probing system. All right, so let's get started and talk about what we're going to do today. So we've done this real-world accuracy test uh, on a lot of the, the other scanners that we have. And with this new Metroscan Black that just came out, this is the fourth generation of the Metroscan system, we thought we would do this real-world accuracy test on this equipment as well. And why we like to do these tests is because you do get, you know, accuracy numbers from the manufacturer, but you got to remember, those are done uh, if, if, for example, they're an ISO accredited lab, it's a very, you know, a controlled environment, very stringent, stringent standards um, that they adhere to. And that's all well and good because you do want those numbers. But what about out in the real world, you know, in your shop or out on the shop floor where you have environmental conditions, you can have different surface uh, reflective types, you know, things like that, vibration, movement. All of those play into accuracy. So we like to do some of our own real world testing and just see what kind of numbers uh, we come up with. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's talk about the layout of what we have here on the table and kind of explain what we're going to do. Now we'll start and we'll do 3D scanning uh, with the Metroscan. So the Metroscan does both 3D scanning and 3D probing. And we're not going to go into how that system works. We've already got an in-depth, detailed uh, demo of the new mattress scan system. And we'll put a, a description in the link uh, uh, below. You can go watch that if you actually want to see how it works. But what we have here is a series of ball bars, and then I've got some gauge blocks. Okay, so we've got a ball bar going this way, um, which has uh, basically two spheres on it, but then it also has two cones. So we'll be able to do scanning and we'll probe the cones and get the center point of those cones. So I've got, uh, it's about 25 inches uh, to the, the sphere centers. I've got one here going left to right. Then I've got one going uh, back to uh, front to back with some elevation. And then I've got a little bit longer uh, ball bar here uh, on an angle and uh, going up. And finally, I've got just a couple of different gauge blocks. Now, why am I setting this up like this? Well, if you look at a lot of manufacturers and you look at their accuracy numbers, what they like to give you is a point-to-point -point measurement, kind of just left to right, at a fairly short distance, okay? So that's great if you're just measuring that kind of, you know, point-to-point, -point, you know, back and forth, and they'll look at repeatability and things like that. But in our opinion, that's not the real world. Nobody just measures two points on something. They measure something in 3D space. And that's what we call volumetric uh, accuracy or volumetric measurement, if you want to call it that, instead of point to point. And that's really, a, a, in my opinion, a better uh, test when you do something like this. You want to look at your, your volume and measure within that volume in different orientations, left to right, up, down, on an angle, and then see what kind of numbers you get. Because if you're measuring or scanning a part in the real world, it's generally going to have some shape. But anyways, and then we'll, on the gauge blocks here, I think we've got a 6 and a 12 inch gauge block. And we're just going to measure the edges there. And again, just, um, you know, something on an angle so we can look at uh, volume. So uh, that's the setup we're using here today. Let's get the scanner out and get ready to go. And we'll go ahead and get this scanned. Now, the Metroscan system has two modes you can scan in or probe in. And those are called static and dynamic. Now, we're going to use static to start, and we'll show dynamic later. And again, I would refer you to the video I mentioned if you really want to go into detail of how all that works. But basically what static mode means is nothing can move. Um, the, uh, as far as our ball bars and the C-track, which is just off screen there, none of that can move. So if I bump the table or knock something, we're going to lose our accuracy. And that's how traditional CMMs and arm-based and even, you know, structured light, tripod-mounted systems, they all work in that static mode. Um, and we use that about 20% of the time, um, 
and we use the dynamic mode more of the time. And again, we'll show that in a little bit. But let's just go ahead and get started. And we're going to tell the system um, that we want to start scanning. And we just pick up the scan head and we push the trigger and it's going to start scanning. Now I'm really just interested in the balls themselves or the spheres uh, and I'll work my way around them. And I don't have to do this in any particular order. Okay. And we'll just come up here. Um, you want to try to get as much as the sphere as you can um, because we're going to want to be able to find the center point of that. Okay. So we're just going to keep moving around. And then for the gauge blocks, we're really just after the end of the block, but we'll grab some of it here just so we have some kind of reference. Scan data, get the sphere. All scanners are line of sight, so it's important I just kind of rotate around, try to pick it up, and again, get it from all different angles. Uh, and for the gauge blocks, we're just gonna do a, a basically fit a plane through the end and then measure uh, plane to plane for the spheres we'll create a sphere and find the center point and measure it that way, okay? Get this. And to get that front one, I'm gonna walk around over here to get, let's go ahead and get some of this on here and then come over here, get the front of that. And again, it's important we don't bump the table or touch anything while we're doing this. All right, so that should be good uh, for, the, uh, for the scanning uh, part of this. And then what we'll do is we'll go in the software and we're going to fit spheres uh, through this geometry and then planes. And then we're going to measure it. And these, what these uh, ball bars are, or even gauge blocks, and these are metrology grade uh, gauge blocks. There's different gauge blocks, setup blocks. These are the more expensive type, which are meant for inspection metrology. But on these bars is a, is a value from the center of each sphere, and then also from the cone, um, the center of these cones. Uh, and those, these bars typically once a year would go back to the factory to an accredited lab and get recertified. They'll remeasure them, uh, make sure they're still round, um, and you know, put a new sticker on them with those numbers. So these are great to have in the field because it's an, it's an artifact with a known number on it that you can scan and measure uh, and see what your accuracy looks like. So we take these in the field with us quite a bit. If we gotta go out in a harsh environment, once we get the system out set up and acclimated to temperature, we'll scan these bars and make sure you know, our numbers look good. So we use these quite a bit. But that's what we're gonna do. These are certified bars, we have numbers on them, and we're gonna compare our scan data to those known numbers. So now what we're gonna do is go into our inspection software here. And we've got a spreadsheet with the actual uh, numbers off of the uh, ball bars and the gauge blocks. And we're gonna measure the scan data and type that in and see what the difference looks like. Uh, so let's start by uh, measuring the first sphere here to here, and we'll key in that value, which is 648.4698. And that gives us a difference of about 16 microns, or 6 tenths of one thousandths of an inch. And next, we will go ahead and do this center of this sphere to this center of that sphere there. And that gives us a value of 644.5276, uh, or, or a difference of basically uh, one and a half micron. And last, we will do the large bar over here from this center point to that one. And that gives us a value of 800.229 for a difference of about 12 microns. So overall on the bar, ball bar is very good. Uh, 12 microns would be about four tenths of one thousandths of an inch. Uh, next, let's go ahead and do the gauge blocks. Now these, we will do a plane to plane measurement. 
uh, because we don't have uh, sphere centers like we do uh, on the spheres, obviously. And that value on this one here is 304.8091. And that's a difference of about uh, three microns. And then finally, the smaller gauge block back here. Same thing. We're going to go this plane to this plane and pull out that dimension. And that number is 152.486 for a difference of about three microns. So overall, extremely well. Uh, numbers here. They average out to about seven microns on all of them. Uh, and when you consider this is about a, you know, four foot by three foot area uh, that we scanned as far as the volume, um, really impressive number. So, and well below the manufacturer's specs uh, for this particular setup. Now let's go ahead and probe the cones on uh, the ball bars and get some measurements um, uh, off of that. So what we're gonna do to get started is we're gonna tell it we're gonna probe. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do is set up a plane, um, and that'll just be a, a reference vector uh, for when we go to probe the point. So I'm just gonna use the table. We just drop it down, push the button, and I need three points to create a plane. And there we go. So we'll go ahead and create that plane. And now we will just create some points that we can then measure to. So point one, and again, this is where uh, we're gonna use that existing plane. And we're gonna go in and on, and on two of these ball bars, we have these cones and we just drop the, uh, uh, we just drop the, uh, the probe in there and we can um, create a point. So we'll do that there, create the second point here. And then we'll go ahead and create a point up here. And then finally, the point back here. Now I have to be very careful I'm doing this that I don't move it around. Again, we're in that static mode. Okay, so what we should see here on the screen is the two points there and then the two points going uh, this way here. And what we'll do is we'll, again, uh, go in the software here in a minute, we'll measure those and compare them back to the measurements that are on um, the actual uh, ball bar. So we'll take a look at that. But again, we've got left to right and we've got some elevation going back to forth. So again, this will be a good test to see what kind of accuracy we can get. And again, this is in static mode where nothing can move. Okay, so we're back here in our inspection software, and this one is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is measure from one point to the next and key in those numbers. So we've got 521.6243. Uh, that gives us a difference of about 12 microns. And then the second measurement will be from this point to this point, and that value is 519.3917, and that's a difference of about 19 microns or 7 tenths of one thousandths of an inch. So again, uh, very, very good uh, numbers on, on these uh, two ball bars uh, doing probing in the static mode. Now we're set up for the dynamic referencing mode. And what that allows us to do is 3D scan and track not only the scan head, but the part itself and the C-track. So basically all three of those items can be moving around while we're scanning and still holding our accuracy. And that's really what shop floor metrology is about. That ability to go out in a harsh environment where you have things moving around, people coming and going, um, and again, you don't have to worry about things being bumped or moved. So let's show you how this works. So we're gonna take the ball bar, we're gonna hold it in our hand, we're gonna tell it we wanna start scanning, and you can see as I move, here, let's go down the bar a little bit, let's get my hand, but you can see as we're moving around, that scan data is still perfectly lined up, okay? 
And then let's come over and get this one over here. So very, very powerful to be able to do this. And you can't do this on most other types of systems. So again, the bar or the part could be moving, the scanner's moving, and the C-Track could all be moving at the same time. And it all gets tracked and still holds the accuracy. So very, very powerful. So back here in the inspection software, let's go ahead and pull a dimension uh, for the dynamic mode on the ball bar that we uh, scanned. Same thing, we'll grab the sphere center to sphere center, and that will give us a value of 644.5447 for a difference of about 15 microns or 6 tenths of one thousandths of an inch. And if you think about that, holding that in, uh, in your hand while you're scanning and it moving around, that's a pretty phenomenal number. And finally, we're going to do that dynamic uh, referencing with the probing system. And again, I'm just going to hold this in my hands. You can see there's no way I can hold this uh, completely steady. Tell it to take a point. Come over here. Tell it to take a point. And record those two points. So again, very, very powerful if you're out on the shop floor in the real world where things are moving around. You can do both scanning and probing with this dynamic referencing system. So what we'll do now is we're gonna go look at the results and see how both methods worked out and see how accurate this system really is compared to these artifacts we have here. For the uh, dynamic probing, we just have those two points. Uh, we'll come in here and pull a dimension from that point to that point. And that number is 519. 0.4327 for a difference of about 21 microns or eight tenths of one thousandths of an inch. So again, very, very good considering we were hand holding the probe and the bar uh, while we were trying to uh, pull that measurement. So the last thing we'll do here is take a look uh, at all the measurements side by side just so you can get an idea. Uh, the first test was doing the 3D scanning in static mode. Uh, and we measured three bars and the gauge blocks, and you can see the numbers there. Uh, and then we probed uh, two of the ball bars that had the cones on it. You can see the numbers there. And then finally, we did a scan in dynamic mode on the one ball bar and then the probe in dynamic mode. Again, that was the, the completely handheld mode, and you can see the numbers there. So uh, overall, numbers look really good. So this wraps up the Metriscan real world accuracy test. And as you saw by the results, it's pretty impressive that we can get those kind of numbers out of a system that is completely portable, shop floor friendly, can work in harsh environments with vibration and movement and everything going on um, in this system. It's very easy to use, easy to set up, and, and you get both non-contact scanning and contact probing. And if you go back again and watch that video, we'll go into a lot of detail, the demo video on, you know, how both of these systems work. But again, very incredible that we can get these kind of numbers out of a shop floor handheld system that, you know, a few years ago would take a very expensive CMM or, you know, other really expensive system to get to the accuracy numbers we're getting. We're not only getting them, but we're getting them with movement and other things, vibration, things like that, which is what the, you know, the real world is all about. It's very hard to go out into a harsh environment and, and have any kind of control. And this system allows you to still get very, very good accuracy in those environments.